Factor investing done through ETFs has officially gained both the interest and money of investors. Assets in U.S. listed multi-factor ETFs hover around $130 billion. And if we include the other aspect of factor investing, these are the single-based factors along with ESG. It's over a trillion dollars. That's according to Bloomberg. Today's ETF battle is a triple header between factor ETFs from Invesco, Wisdom Tree, and Vanguard. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Season four is in full swing, and we're so glad to have you with us. Be sure to watch our full playlist in the description section below. You can binge watch. In fact, it's encouraged. And if you're not already subscribed to ETF Guide TV, what in the wide, wide world of sports are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and join the fun. Also, if there's an ETF battle that you'd like to see, send me your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. We could do double, triple, and quadruple headers, so make it good. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program Judges, along with links to our program Sponsor, Direction Investments, plus registration links to live events like our March Retirement Planning Series. Wait a second, that just happened. You missed it. Well, if you did, you can check out the description section. We've already got our April date down, so don't miss it. Factor investing done through ETFs chooses stocks by certain characteristics like value, momentum, size, quality. And there are some ETFs that only use single factors, while others use multi-factor. They combine all of that together in one package. The latter is what we've got on today's show. It's a triple header contest requested by a viewer named Div It Up. He wanted to see this matchup so badly that he asked me once, twice, three times a lady. Thank you so much for your persistence, Divot Up. This matchup, again, is between multi-factor ETFs from Wisdom Tree Invesco and Vanguard. So which of these ones is king of the heap? Helping us to sort through it is an illustrious duo. We've got James Seyfart with Bloomberg and John Davey with the Story of Portfolio Advisors. Judges, welcome to the show. It's so good to see you. Thanks for having me, Ron. Looking forward to it. Good to be here, Ron. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. Mystery is where you, our judges, can pick a single factor or any factor that you feel is crucial to today's contest. You can also nominate wildcard ETFs as you feel there's a better choice elsewhere. You can also opt for split decisions. So let's see what our judges have up their sleeve Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever known in advance by myself or our judges, nor are they predetermined. Let's start with the first category, which is cost. James, please kick things off. Yeah, so cost, it's a pretty simple way to look at things, but there is there is different ways that I'm going to look at this. So if you look at Vanguard VFMF, they are the lowest fee. Um, they have the lowest expense ratio. But the other thing is, you, you have to look at this, if you look at OMFL and USMF, they have the same, virtually the same expense ratio, 28 basis points or 29 basis points. But OMFL is has a much tighter bid-ask spread. So that, if you include that in the cost, that's something you should be looking at if you're going to be trading these things. That said, VFMF is the clear winner on cost. That's a strong start. John, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of cost? I agree with everything James said. So I, I would give the cost to VMF just from the pure expense ratio. But the trade and liquidity bid offer is, you know, exactly what James said. So, but I'll, I'll give the category winner to uh, VFMF. Our next category is exposure strategy. So, John, can you break it down for us? Yeah. So they're all trying to give you exposure to multiple, um, you know, kind of factors. So, you know, the idea is that instead of just buying like, you know, the VTV, the value ETF from Vanguard. Um, you know, if you just go in all in on one factor, then, you know, you're making a big bet. So some providers like to kind of diversify, you know, their exposures and give you a multi-factor approach. So, um, you know, the Vanguard one uses three targeted factors, momentum, quality, value. OMFL will use value, momentum, quality, low vol plus size. Uh, USMF uses two fundamental factors, two technical. So, the, um, the two fundamental ones are value and quality. The two technicals are momentum correlation. 
Um, you know, my advice for people is like kind of choose the factors that you like for whatever reason you like them. You know, harvest them in a very low cost format. Own it for the long run. Um, you know, don't try and time your factors. Don't try and like you know pick and choose. Um, be you know. Uh, tactical with your factors. I, I think that's what we do at Astoria Advisors. You know, we manage ETF portfolios on behalf of other financial advisors. So, you know, I think what I like about o OMFL, I'll give that as a category winner, is that, you know, it's probably a little bit, um, you know, they, they have some kind of market regime indicators that they use in order to kind of tilt. So that kind of aligns more philosophically with Astoria. So that's my category winner, OMFL. Thank you, John. James, you're up next. Please break it down for us on exposure strategy. Which of these three ETFs shines in your viewpoint? Yeah, so I agree with everything John said. I mean, it, it comes down to like exactly – you can read through the actual strategies of what these things uh, are actually trying to do. They're all very similar in their languages. You get different exposures in them. One thing I would point out is the uh, market cap exposures. VFMF goes from large cap to small cap. OMFL is predominantly, it's pretty much only large caps. So uh, if you're going the Invesco OMFL, you're going to be investing in large cap stocks only. And USMF is mostly large caps, but also has a significant in mid caps. So uh, they offer three very different types of exposure. So even if they try to get after the same factors, if you're investing in OMFL, you have large cap exposure and large cap outperforms or underperforms, you're going to be subject to that uh, versus whatever. So um, I I, I almost give it a tie between OMFL and VFMF primarily. So I'm going to go with a tie on this one, primarily because I like the way OMFL has done things. But I also like the fact that VFMF is giving you exposure to um, the entire uh, slice of the U.S. equity market. It's giving you large caps, small caps and mid caps. Next up is performance. And this is where it really gets interesting. So, James, which of these three ETFs stands out? Yeah, so for me, the one that stands out is going to be OMFL again. I mean, if you look over a one year, two year, they're relatively in line with each other. But when you start expanding back to five years, um, OMFL is, is crushing the other two. Uh, so you kind of have to give it to OMFL. Again, I think that might largely be due to, to, due to large caps outperformance in 2020. Um, but uh, I, I haven't really looked into exactly why that is, but I got I to gotta go with OMFL here. John, you're up next. Give us your take on performance. I think, like, you know, you got to have a forward looking view. So, you know, at a story of what we've been arguing is that, like, you know, your portfolio in the next three to five years should look very different from the, the last decade, right? So, what worked in the last decade is, you know, large cap US. So, like, that's why OMFL has dominated. But, you know, I'm going to kind of say, like, I think in the next three to five years, you'd want to own more of like a USMF, which has like that mid cap tilt. Um, you know, VM, VFMF is not bad either. So I kind of, I think you should do the opposite. I think you should buy the laggard here. Um, you know, just because it's been so extreme, the U.S. large cap, you know, dominance in the last, you know, three, five, ten years. So I'm going to say USMF or VFMF, you know, it should be the one you utilize just on performance going forward. And what, which of those two would you prefer or is it the same? I, I think it, like I'll give it a tie, just like James did before. So I think either one of them is the one you should look at, you know, going forward because you'll get more uh, of a tilt towards, you know, kind of mid or mid cap ish tilt. So specifically, like the PE ratio for US MF is like thirteen, and for Vanguard it's like ten. So you know, our thesis at a story is that we're in an environment where lower multiple stocks are going to be re rewarded. You know, just given kind of the market regime that's kind of ongoing and, and persistent. So I think higher multiple stocks are going to be more um, punished just because, you know, we're in this like D rating cycle. So next up is the mystery battle category. That's where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. John, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I'll, I'll say fundamentals, like, you know, specifically P ratio. So the P ratio for Vanguard is, you know, 10. For the Invesco one, it's 17. For the Wisentry one, it's 13. You know, there was a period where we did utilize USMF. So um, I'm going to use that as kind of like the one I choose. Um, but, you know, on the valuation basis, I think, like, the idea is, like, you know, use, you know, shy away from, you know, the, the, uh, the Invesco one just because it's a little bit expensive. So... I'd go with USMF. 
Got it. Thank you, John. James, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Yeah, so I'm going to point out two things here that were re- that I didn't really get a chance to point out. I kind of pointed out the volume, so I want to say that if you're trading this thing or you're looking for liquidity, the only one here that's offering like legitimate high level, um, nearly institutional grade liquidity is OMFL. It's the largest one, um, so that's one point that OMFL is going to get in its hat. But there's a detriment here. I like to look at like how concentrated is the portfolio, and if you look at the top ten holdings in each of these ETFs. OMFL, almost 40% of the, the, of the fund is in, is in the top 10 holdings, despite it having um, a significant amount of like, exposure to different. So it has 309 stocks, but of those 309, 10 of them make up 40%. So that's a concentration risk, whereas the opposite, you have a lot more exposure in VFMF and you have a lot more, you have less share, less stocks held in USMF, the Wisdom Tree version, but you still only have 12% in the top 10 holdings. So you get a much more diversified basket with VMF, VFMF and USMF. So um, I'm going to go on the mystery category. I do like the fact that OMFL has a much higher level of liquidity, which I hinted at earlier, but I like the diversification aspects you get from VFMF and USMF. So I'm going to give it a tie to those two. All right. Perfect. I got you down for those two. Split decision. Well, let's give our judges one final chance to give us their overall battle winner. James, you're up. Give it to us. Yeah. uh, I. So when I initially started looking at this, I was like, I thought OMFL was going to be my favorite, uh, but I'm going to have to lean VFMF for actually some of the reasons that John mentioned. Uh, It has a much lower PE ratio. You've got exposure to large, mid, and small cap. Um, So for for all those reasons, it's much more diversified. Uh, But if you want something that has pop potential, anything like that, you have to go OMFL uh, probably. But I, I tend to like VFMF here if I had to pick one. The other thing to point out is VFMF is an actively managed fund. It's mostly rules based, but by definition and technically as it's registered, it is actively managed, unlike OMFL and USMF, which are passively managed. Great points. Thank you for bringing that out, James. John, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. So I'm going to go with the uh, the Wisdom Tree one only because like we've used it before, you know, principally, you know, we do like more of the mid cap tilt right now, just because I think in a, in a higher interest rate environment, you know, small cap stocks could get more punished just because, you know, they'll feel the brunt of higher debt cost. Um, you know, I think mid cap stocks is kind of the sweet spot for where we want portfolios to be. Um, you know, I like the fact that it's multi-factor. I like the fact that it's index. I know exactly what it's going to deliver, you know, two fundamental factors, two technical factors. Um, you know, it's not expensive, 28 basis points. You know, again, it's kind of squarely in that mid cap, you know, blend space. If you load this up into, you know, a, um, a Morningstar tool, you know, 13 PE ratio is still, you know, four or five valuation turns cheaper than like the dynamic uh, Invesco one. I would have loved the dynamic Invesco one because I think principally it does what we do, which is like tilt to factors based on like the marker regime. So conceptually, I like it, but I have to give the edge like to Wisdom Tree if I'm going to use it in our portfolios going forward. Uh, Because like I said, in fact, we have used it before. It's just we're not doing it at the moment, but that's what we would principally like to invest in. Well, our judges have spoken, and according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is a split decision between USMF and VFMF. And uh, USMF from Wisdom Tree was John Davies' choice. That particular ETF he likes for its indexed approach. Also, its mid-cap tilt, which he thinks is a sweet spot. And then, of course, he likes it, too, because of the the lower valuation relative to large caps and uh, OMFL, which is heavily tilted to those large caps. So great points uh, by John. And then, of course, James making his awesome arguments in favor of VFMF from Vanguard. As he pointed out, this is an actively managed ETF. It's got a lower PE ratio. And then he also likes the diversification of this particular ETF, that multi-cap approach. You get large, mid, and small caps in one package. So um, from a diversification perspective, that was something that uh, James pointed out that was an awesome point. Overall, great job to both of our judges for highlighting today's multi-factor ETF showdown. Boy, we couldn't have done it without you. Great analysis and keep up the good work. Thanks for having me, Ron. Well, be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor direction, Investments. Keep your awesome ETF battle requests coming. 
Give us your ticker symbols in the YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ronda Leggy. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.